Here we have a bomb calorimeter, which is different from a coffee cup calorimeter. Um, in a bomb calorimeter, you can see that you have this kind of metal shell. Um, there's a cutaway so you can see what's going on internally. Uh, it's filled with water. And then in this, this chamber here, that's your system, you have your sample in this little dish. So this is actually how they used to find the caloric content of food. So let's say you have some crushed up cereal or something in there. Um, these ignition wires are going to give enough energy to actually start a fire. Okay, so you're burning your food. And then all that energy goes out into the water and the um, walls of your bomb calorimeter. So the water and the walls are going to absorb a certain amount of energy. So this is a little different than coffee cup calorimetry because coffee cup calorimetry is at constant pressure, it's at atmospheric pressure. Here you can see um, as you, you heat this water, the pressure is going to build, which is actually why it's called a bomb calorimeter. Um, so bomb calorimeters are at constant volume, not constant pressure. And therefore we're not calculating ultimately a delta H or a change in enthalpy value because by definition that's at constant pressure. So instead, we'd have to calculate um, a delta E, which is change in internal energy. The pertinent equation here is not going to be Q is equal to MC delta T. That's what you use for coffee cup calorimetry. Here, you're going to use Q of the bomb, okay, the entire calorimetry, calorimeter, is equal to C cal times delta T. And your C cal is called the calorimeter constant. So that's basically like the mass of your water times, not really specific heat, but the combined almost specific heats of that entire surrounding bomb calorimeter. So you're not going to use this guy. And instead, you're going to use Q bomb is equal to the calorimeter constant, which is typically given to you, times the change in temperature. When reading the question, you can see we're given the mass of sucrose, sucrose is our sample, that's being burned in this bomb calorimeter. However, we don't have a mass in this equation, okay? So we're not gonna use that yet. We're gonna use that later on. As it's burning, it's, the sucrose is releasing its energy to the surroundings, which is the water and the metal of the bomb calorimeter. And you can see the temperature change is about four degrees Celsius. We are given this value, the heat capacity of the calorimeter. Um, it's 4.90 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So you notice there's no mass involved here. And then ultimately we need to find the heat of combustion of sucrose and it usually tells you the unit. So that can really help you. So in kilojoules per mole of the sucrose. Okay, so our starting step really has nothing to do with the sucrose other than burning the sucrose is what's causing the temperature change. I just substituted in my values for the calorimeter constant and the change in temperature. And it looks like the bomb absorbed about 20.7 kilojoules of energy. In order to relate the energy gained by the bomb to the energy released by the sugar, it's just the opposite. So you can see, um, we just put a negative sign in and now we know the amount of energy released by the sugar. So in order to find your, remember it's delta E this time, not um, delta H, change in internal energy, it's just gonna be the Q of your substance, when it, which in this case is sucrose, I'm just doing S-U-C-R because it's actually faster than um, writing the formula for sucrose. And it says we want it per mole. So that's going to be over moles of sucrose. So take a look back at the problem. It doesn't give you moles of sucrose, but it does give you grams and it gives you the formula. So you can do a quick calculation to figure out your moles of sucrose. If you look over here in white, I did the calculation of grams to moles for sucrose using the molar mass on the periodic table. So now I have my N of the sucrose. Last step is to simply plug in our Q of the sucrose, negative 20.678 kilojoules, 
And then the moles that we just found in white. And our final answer is going to be negative 6,150. Uh, I just rounded to three significant figures because I think that's what you can have in here. And that's going to be in kilojoules per mole of the sucrose.